This is going really well. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, especially my friends that came with me. So, enough to send them stuff. Uh, <clears throat> my day began in a depressed state. Inarticulate, uninspired, no fire in my stomach, no ice in my veins, nothing eloquent or artistic to say. See, the previous night was a rough one. An endless loop of psychotic thoughts assaulted my mind so rapidly that they settled into one static depression. A still life of uh, perfect carnage on the tabletop of a domesticated giant. Hey, honey, what's for dinner? Look what the beanstalk dragged in, it's Jack the Giant Killer. Laying awake in my motel room, I became so unsettled and charged with fear that I sat up in bed. I turned to the right. And I turned on the light that murmurs a cry for help from atop my nightstand like a distant distress beacon. The contours of the sleeping figure in the next bed beside mine registered with the yellow glow of the ball's low wattage. I looked to my partner in crime as he stirred from his medicated stasis across the canyon between our twin beds. We are like isolated island chains in an ocean of mental illness. Joined at sea for our archipelago rattles with pounding waves of relentless anxiety. His island is smothered in medicated banks of rolling fog, while the refusal of Dr. Feelgood's bad medicine, I struggle to keep my head above the sea level's suffocating fucking activity. The curse and the command of a full lunar face falls upon me like a drunken sailor's unwarranted sexual advance into my seabed. And I howl like thunder upon the clouds cracking lips as I realize why my face is missing from your map. I'm a foundation of hard stone which weeps like a melting candle under the weight of holding heaven's burden. Don't touch the floor, it's lava. Don't touch the door, it's holding back the abundant banquet of humanity's collective horror. The public buzzes like profane wasps and busy bees. Tragic secrets are bound like books in a library of lockjaw. The man sleeping in the bed next to mine is a co-worker. He is a semi-professional poker player, and he'd have nothing if not for addiction. I'd have nothing if not for anxiety. Those are his words, not mine, but I realize how true they are. He held in his hands, he held in his hands the tools of his profession. In his right, playing cards, and in his left, a prescription for pills and poker chips. He told me earlier that day he thought he was going to die in the back of the taxi cab on the way back to our distant outpost. Just another day in paradise. <laughs> I get out of bed and I change my clothes one, two, three times and drive to the emergency room parking lot where I call 1-800-SUICIDE. I speak to Heather, who sounds cute and submissive, and so I dominate the conversation. <laughs> I love manipulating mental health professionals, but she is no doctor, just collateral damage. Um, no. See, seduction is a lot like a drug, and I don't feel psychotic anymore, just a little high. Um, thank you, Heather, for 1 800 suicide. You should call my hotline sometime. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah.